Hi everyone, I'm Elaine Quijano. It's good to be with you. Thank you for joining us. New video has emerged showing the moments right before and after the deadly shooting rampage at three spas in the Atlanta area. Authorities have arrested and charged 21-year-old Robert Aaron Long in connection with the attack. Eight people were killed, including six women of Asian descent. But the suspect is denying the crime was racially motivated. Still, the shootings have left many Asian Americans afraid and outraged. The community has been the target of an increase in violence and bigotry over the past year. CBS News national correspondent Mark Strassman has the latest on the investigation into the attack. Surveillance video obtained by the Daily Mail shows Robert Long's black Hyundai pull up to Young's Asian massage. Police say he confessed to gunning down four people inside, two of them Asian women. Moments later, Long walked back to his car and drove away, then bedlam as dazed and wounded customers come out and police rush to reports of gunshots. From Cherokee County, Long traveled roughly 30 miles to Atlanta and at two separate massage spas shot down four more people, all Asian women. According to a local Korean newspaper, the victim at the aromatherapy spa opened the door thinking Long was a customer, but he suddenly opened fire and she was shot dead. He did frequent those two uh, locations. Uh, Atlanta police say it's not clear so if the killer targeted the specific people. The investigation into a possible hate crime, is that still on the table? Our investigation is looking at everything, so nothing is off the table for our investigation. There's been a national backlash against the way Cherokee County law enforcement initially pointed to Long's motive. He has uh, some, some issues, uh, potentially uh, sexual addiction. Social media also jumped on how Captain Jay Baker framed the killer's mindset. Um, and yesterday was a really bad day for him, and this is what he did. Making matters worse, Baker's anti-Asian Facebook post last year, promoting T-shirts with the message, COVID-19, imported virus from China. Recent attacks on Asian Americans include this 76-year-old Chinese woman in San Francisco, sucker punched by a white man. She bloodied her attacker with a stick. He was arrested. During the pandemic, Asian Americans have reported nearly 3,800 attacks, physical and verbal. On Capitol Hill, the first hearing in 30 years into Asian American hate was often emotional. This hearing was to address the hurt and pain of our community and to find solutions, and we will not let you take our voice away from us. In a statement, the Cherokee County Sheriff said he regretted any suggestion of disrespect for the victims or sympathy for the suspect. There was no mention of the racist t-shirt. But Elaine, Captain Baker, will no longer speak publicly about this investigation. All right, Mark Strassman, thank you. I'm joined now by Siobhan Hughes and Jack Terman. Siobhan is a congressional reporter for The Wall Street Journal, and Jack is a congressional reporter for CBS News. Welcome. It's good to see you both. Siobhan, let me start with you. As Mark mentioned, the House held a committee hearing on the spike of discrimination and violence against Asian Americans. What solutions do lawmakers and activists want to see to address this growing issue? Well, there are a couple of things. Number one, putting a spotlight on the issue, and that's what you saw at that House Judiciary Committee hearing today. Uh, it was notable because America does not have a history of, in the moment, putting a spotlight on hate crimes involving Asian Americans. As the man who led the committee hearing, Steve Cohen, pointed out, there in this country has been a history of xenophobia involving Asian Americans. Um, as a practical matter, though, the solution for now is coming from Grace Meng, who your viewers just saw in that clip, she is reintroducing a measure that she had pushed last year that required the Justice Department to designate an official to expedite a review of what she is labeling COVID-19 hate crimes. But these are very closely connected to crimes against Asian Americans. And of course, that ends up being the rub for some Republicans, because a lot of what people believe has led to a rise in these crimes is, in fact, some of the rhetoric surrounding the coronavirus perpetuated by President Trump. His name was really not specifically used at the hearing today, but that is the political context. I want to um, ask you more about that legislation in a moment. But, Jack, first, there was a tense moment during the hearings when Republican Congressman Chip Roy of Texas criticized China and the proceedings themselves. Here's some of what he said. We shouldn't be worried about having a committee of 
members of Congress policing our rhetoric because some evildoers go engage in some evil activity as occurred in Atlanta, Georgia. Because when we start policing free speech, we're doing the very thing that we're condemning when we condemn what the Chinese Communist Party does to their country. And that's exactly where this wants to go. This is the road this wants to head down. And nothing could be more dangerous than going down that road. What was the response to those remarks, Jack? Was there um, pushback, for instance, from other Republicans? Yeah, there is a, a very quick response from, from Representative Cohen, who uh, chaired the subcommittee hearing, who basically said, while well, free speech is important, you know, the instances, instances he described were uh, physical harassment. And then the most passionate response came from Representative Grace Mang, uh, who is in the clip in Mark's TV package, um, where she basically said that, you know, Representative Roy, Republicans, former President Donald Trump, for that matter, could talk about issues uh, relating to other countries, including China, but they don't have to put, as Grace Mang would put it, a bullseye on the back of Asian Americans and the AAPI community. Uh, and there was also a lot of uh, pushback from Representative McClintock uh, from California, who basically criticized the entire scope of the hearing, uh, arguing that it's too large and that it's attacking society as systematically racist. And when, you know, asked about Republicans' concerns to this argument of free speech that they were trying to make, uh, John Yang, the president of uh, Asian Americans Advancing Justice, said, you know, leaders model the behavior that the community wants to follow and using uh, racist language to describe or characterize the COVID-19 pandemic is very harmful to the AAPI community and very divisive. Yeah. Um, so, Siobhan, earlier this year, as you mentioned, Democratic Congresswoman Grace Swing of New York reintroduced legislation that would address anti-Asian American hate crimes. Tell us more about this, and specifically, does it have support among lawmakers on both sides? Well, as a measure of how far this has come, last year, last session when she introduced this, there were some 34 co-sponsors. It never got a vote. This year, when I last checked, there were some 94 co-sponsors. So support for this is clearly going, growing. Now, we are about at the point when legislation is going to have to go through regular order in the House. There's an April 1st deadline. So any process would be prolonged because there would have to be a Judiciary Committee hearing a markup, something would have to go to the floor. But it's hard to rule something like that out. One other thing I do want to point out about the legislation that she is promoting this time around, there are no mandates that say what you can or can't say as a matter of speech. But the legislation would establish guidance for ways to have a conversation about COVID-19 that diminishes the racial charge that is currently part of the conversation. Hmm, interesting. Um, well, Jack, back in January, as you know, President Biden signed an executive action aimed at fighting hate against Asian Americans. Do advocates feel that action has been enough to protect the community? I think advocates would describe that executive order as a good first step, but obviously that there's more to be done. Um, obviously, as mentioned, you know, Grace Meng and on the Senate side, uh, Senator Hirono from Hawaii have... Uh, introduced this COVID-19 Hate Crimes Act, uh, you know, that would expeditiously uh, re be reviewed uh, hate crimes uh, reports uh, through a point person at DOJ, um, and then would also allocate re resources to state and local enforcement agencies in terms of reports. But I think, you know, while advocates would say back what happened in January uh, was a good first step, especially now more action needs to be taken, especially in the wake of Atlanta. Yeah, and Siobhan, the president and vice president um, will visit Georgia on Friday in the wake of Tuesday's attack. What do we know uh, about their plans there? And, and um, what specifically are they planning with respect to the Asian American community? So 
President Biden has been very careful in terms of how he's talked about this because he said, you know, we're not really clear about the motive, about whether this is racially motivated. But he has also said that what's happening to the Asian American community is incredibly disturbing. And the fact that he is going there through his presence, this really does create a moment, an opportunity for him to address the wide scale forms of harassment and, and frankly, even worse, as came up in the hearing today, that have beset this community. Um, at the hearing today, it did get graphic at the beginning. There were clips played of the violence, some of which you showed, images of a man whose face had been slashed, descriptions of an Asian American woman who'd been set on fire. And so what we're talking about is the sort of activity that does call out for presidential leadership. And it wouldn't surprise me if Joe Biden wanted to step into that void right now. All right, Siobhan Hughes and Jack Terman, it's really good to see you both. Thank you.